Image stabilization is becoming a standard feature in most lenses and more recently becoming a feature of the camera itself. Now sometimes you may hear that a lens offers say four stops of image stabilization. Maybe the camera has five stops of image stabilization but what exactly does this mean and can it be used to improve our photography? Stick around to find out. Welcome to the Photogenius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera so you can take better photos. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now this week's video is all about a camera feature, sometimes a lens feature, called image stabilization. And what I want to do is clarify what do manufacturers mean when they advertise products as having X stops of image stabilization. What does it mean? Is it something we can take advantage of to improve our photography and more? Now I think the best place to begin is to understand what does stops mean in photography terms. A stop is the common term used in photography to indicate either a doubling of light or a halving of light. An increase in exposure of one stop means that twice as much light is recorded by the camera, so the image will be one stop brighter. Another increase of a stop will mean the light is again doubled. The camera's light meter also indicates how bright or dark our images will be using a scale based on stops. So using this meter, we can see how bright or dark an image will be in advance of taking it. Typically, cameras allow us to adjust exposure in increments of one third of a stop by adjusting either the shutter speed, aperture or ISO. This allows for precise adjustment of exposure. As an example, if my light meter is showing an underexposure of minus one stop, then a good way of increasing the light recorded by the camera is to open the shutter longer. Adjusting the shutter speed from 1 200th of a second to 1 100th of a second is a doubling of light, an increase of one stop, and now I have a balanced exposure. Now so we can see how stops relate to image stabilization, let's just remind ourselves of what image stabilization is actually designed to do and how it can benefit you as a photographer. Image stabilization is a feature built into some lenses and some cameras and is for use when you're hand holding the camera and is designed to try and counteract any hand movements to give you sharper images. Now, depending on the brand of camera or lens you're using, image stabilization may actually be called something else. And if it's built into the camera itself, it's usually referred to as in-body image stabilization or IBIS for short. Now, I just want to quickly say, if you're enjoying this week's video and you're picking up some great tips, there is a way in which you can support the channel that doesn't cost you anything. All you got to do is hit the like button. You'll find it somewhere down here. Giving this video a thumbs up helps it get noticed, that helps the channel grow. The more the channel grows, the more content I can bring you for free. Okay, let's get back to it. Image stabilization is going to be particularly useful if you're using a slow shutter speed and you're not using a tripod. So this may be doing indoor photography, maybe taking photos at the end of the day, possibly even at night time. Now the conventional rule is if you're using a standard lens that's around 50 millimeters or less, then you don't really want to be using a shutter speed that is any slower than 1 60th of a second. Now as a side note, this rule may change depending on the camera lens combination you're using. Now to avoid making this video just too long and overly complicated and getting sidetracked, I've made a separate video all about this subject. I really think you should check it out next. I'll put a link at the end of this video, but also you'll find a link in the description below. So now we know what stops are and also the benefits of image stabilization, let's take a look at how the two are linked. So to demonstrate how this works, yesterday morning I went for a short walk locally with my Nikon Z6, taking photos of some of the local art. And of course to avoid camera shake, I made sure that my shutter speed didn't dip below the magic number of 1 60th of a second. Image stabilization was turned off. 
Now, because these images were taken during the day when the light was good, I was able to maintain a faster shutter speed. This, of course, means I don't have to worry about a tripod, and I certainly didn't need to use image stabilization. But I did decide to revisit one of those locations and reshoot one of the images, but this time much later in the day, close to sundown, when clearly there wasn't as much light available. And I also wanted to do this handheld, no tripod. This is where image stabilization can really help. This is the second image, taken in poor light, handheld, and using the same aperture and ISO value as the shot taken much earlier the same day. But this time I'm using a shutter speed of half a second. Now this is only made possible because of the camera's 5 axis image stabilization. For the original image I was able to use a fast shutter speed of 1 800th of a second. But now much later into the evening less light is available so as you can see the camera's meter is clearly indicating under exposure. So to fix this, I'm slowing the shutter down to compensate and eventually I reach 1 60th of a second with the meter still indicating under exposure. But remember, this is the shutter speed where I would normally stop as anything slower is likely to mean a blurry image due to the camera being handheld. But with the stabilization turned on, which is rated at five stops, this means I can continue to slow the shutter down and all I need to do is count the stops as I go. Remember that every change in shutter speed is a third of a stop. So here goes. One stop. That's two stops. And at three stops, we can see an improvement in the exposure. Let's keep going. Four stops. And I got lucky on this one, at a change of exactly five stops, the meter is balanced, so I can take the shot. The result is an image that despite being shot using a shutter speed of half a second, is detailed and clear thanks to the camera's stabilization. Compare this to an image taken using exactly the same camera settings and stabilization turned off, and the difference is clear to see. Now you may be thinking, how does all this work when photographing a moving subject? After all, image stabilization by definition is all about keeping the camera lens stable so we get nice, sharp, clear images. But if we're photographing a moving subject, maybe sports or wildlife, we're largely not keeping the camera steady. We're often moving the camera to follow the subject. Let's take a look. Some cameras and some lenses offer an additional sports or active mode that will stabilize up and down camera movement but won't try to correct movement of the camera from side to side, otherwise known as panning. Now if you are photographing a moving subject and your camera or lens doesn't have this option then it's probably best just to turn image stabilization off. That way it's not going to work against you as you purposely move the camera to follow the subject. And to be fair when photographing moving subjects, particularly sports, generally we're using a fast shutter speed anyway and image stabilization probably won't add much to the image anyway. In fact there is some debate as to whether or not we use or even need image stabilization when using really fast shutter speeds to capture fast moving subjects. Now bonus tip, let's talk about tripods. If I'm taking photos in poor light or nighttime, rather than rely on the camera's image stabilization, I use a tripod and I would highly recommend you do the same. Using a tripod, your camera's not going anywhere, there's no movement, you can lower the ISO, you can slow the shutter down and you guys can take amazing photos. But if your camera is on a tripod, you need to remember to turn any stabilization off because if you don't, it can actually work against you. Remember, your camera doesn't know it's on a tripod. It therefore is gonna think it's being handheld. If the stabilization is turned on, it's gonna be trying really hard to get rid of any movement that of course isn't there. And in testing, we found that it can actually cause vibration. So the simple rule of thumb is, if you're hand holding your camera, stabilization is great. If you're on a tripod, just turn it off. So I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video and you picked up some great tips. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That helps the videos get noticed. That helps the channel grow. The more the channel grows, the more content and videos I can bring you 
for free. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. And that's just about it. Other than to say thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.